దూరవిద్యా విధానంలో డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ దేశంలోనే మొట్టమొదటి సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం దాదాపు రెండున్నర దశాబ్దాలుగా దూర విద్యా విధానం ద్వారా కంప్యూటర్ కోర్సును అనుసంధానం చేస్తూ బిఏ బీకాం బిఎస్సీ డిగ్రీ కోర్సులను అందిస్తోంది పోస్ట్ గ్రాడ్యుయేషన్ స్థాయి డిగ్రీ డిప్లొమా స్థాయి కోర్సులను ఔత్సాహికులైన విద్యార్థులకు అందిస్తోంది డెవలప్మెంట్ స్టడీస్ లో సెంటర్ ఫర్ ఎకనామిక్స్ అండ్ సోషల్ స్టడీస్ ద్వారా ఎంఫిల్ పిహెచ్డితో పాటు విశ్వవిద్యాలయమే స్వయంగా దూర విద్యా విధాన అంశంపైన పిహెచ్డి వంటి పరిశోధన కోర్సులు ప్రవేశపెట్టింది రాష్ట్ర వ్యాప్తంగా సుమారు నాలుగున్నర లక్షల మంది విద్యార్థులు ఈ విశ్వవిద్యాలయం నుంచి ఉన్నత విద్యావకాశాలు పొందుతున్నారు డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం స్థానికంగా స్వయం బోధన పద్ధతిలో ముద్రణ రూపంలో రూపొందించిన కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ అందిస్తోంది కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ అధ్యయనానికి సహకరించే విధంగా రేడియో టెలివిజన్ పాఠ్యాంశాల ఆధారంగా కార్యక్రమాలు ప్రసారం చేస్తోంది అధ్యయన కేంద్రాల ద్వారా ఏర్పాటు చేసే సలహా సంసర్గ తరగతులు సైన్స్ ప్రాక్టికల్ సౌకర్యాలు విద్యార్థులకు స్వయం అధ్యయనానికి ఒక చక్కటి అవకాశం ఇవి విద్యార్థి సమీపంలో ఉండే అధ్యయన కేంద్రం నుంచే పొందొచ్చు గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ది టెలికాన్ఫరెన్స్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఆఫ్ డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ దిస్ టెలికాన్ఫరెన్స్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఈజ్ ఇంటెండెడ్ ఫర్ ది లైబ్రరీ సైన్స్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది యూనివర్సిటీ అండ్ దిస్ టెలికాన్ ది డ్యూరేషన్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ టెలికాన్ఫరెన్స్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఈజ్ సిక్స్టీ మినిట్స్ ఇన్ ద ఫస్ట్ హాఫ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ టెలికాన్ఫరెన్స్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ అవర్ ఎక్స్పర్ట్స్ విల్ గివ్ యూ అన్ ఓవర్ వ్యూ ఆఫ్ ది టాపిక్ అండ్ ఇన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ హాఫ్ ది స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ ఎంకరేజ్డ్ to interact with the experts to clarify their doubts on the topic to interact with our experts you can call on the phone numbers 040 the topic of today's teleconference program is copyright issues in the digital environment the process of generation of knowledge expression of ideas involve human creativity and hence these become part of the intellectual property the copyright refers to the rights that are given to a, the author of an original work Uh, for he, for the distribution and production and distribution for a specified period of time the printing technology which was invented in the 15th century by gutenberg it has revolutionized the print world and since then large volumes of books were being produced and distributed some competitive printers they resorted to unfair practices therefore the copyright has come into existence the information and communication technology has advanced so much and uh, with the advancements the digital information has become very easy to access and within a with uh, a very at a very faster pace and also at a uh, lower cost at the same time there is also a possibility to manipulate this information to alter this information and misuse this information and on the other hand apart from this a uh, lot of information is available in the public domain of the internet and there are no restrictions on access for this information so there are different challenges that uh, uh, the we face in the digital Uh, environment so to discuss this topic in detail we have with us two experts from the profession professor chandrashekar rao uh, he needs no introduction he is professor in the department of library and information science of the university and he is also presently the dean faculty of social sciences and the, the other expert we have is dr p divakar 
uh, he he work he, he is a scientist from the pre uh, premier organization ccmb hyderabad welcome you sir thank you to this tele conference to initiate the discussion first i would like to uh, ask professor chandrasekhar rao garu uh, could you please explain our students about the concept and how copyright is important sure madam dr saraja so let us see first what is the definition of a copyright so according to oxford english dictionary it is an exclusive right given by the law for a certain term period of years to an author composer etc or his assignee to print publish or sell copies of original work so so you can see this so from the definition it could be understood that the intellectual capacity of the human brain has uh, evolved into certain creative works like artistic works literary works dramatic works then uh, recording so cin cinematic films etc so all these films all these uh, creations they are dependent on the the capacity of the human so copyright basically involves the the skill and the judgment and also labor involved in creating the original work so when you see the the property generally intellectual property generally the copyright is one aspect of this one to protect the rights of the authors so in general any property we can divide into two types one is a tangible property another intangible property tangible property for example you have the house you have the land you have the gold you have the cash so that could be protected that could be that you can keep it yourself or uh, you can sell it and you can use that for your livelihood there no problem absolutely there no problem at all or you can transfer to your other generations so but intangible property it cannot be seen so it is uh, the ideas generated in your mind so unless you record them you write them and then it will be then, then you can protect them that is what is called expression of the ideas unless you write them in a record form in a physical form you cannot the copyright as you told that uh, in the beginning when the printing press was invented the people uh, the publisher used it to exploit the others because they want to uh, the, the there is no limit for the number of years the term for publication or printing of that one to restrict that one generally the then the idea of uh, controlling that came into the minds of the people then the the copyright has existed the copyright generally protects the 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 expression of ideas in any form physical form so that that is there. unless it is there then uh, the the people uh, cannot able to use their uh, uh, the artistic work or the lit intellectual work for their livelihood so for example in the beginning the kings were there the the poets whose literary works they used to devote to the kings and they used to get some uh, form of uh, gifts royalty. or royalties or some sort of uh, avenue for their livelihood now in the democratic society it is not there who will protect so if it is protected by the society in a way of uh, copyright then they can get some livelihood out of this uh, their literary works and they can use them then use that for their livelihood this is the basic concept uh, uh in the in the evolution of the copyright that means act. the copyright is meant to protect the economic rights and also as well as the moral rights of and the also, yeah creator. in addition to this one the <coughs> not only the economic right but also cultural okay. avenues cultural uh, aspects of a country or a society so uh, somebody if the somebody is uh, able to take up that one then uh, who will protect that one so in india's there are cultural aspects are involved in this one those also to be protected if they are already in the written form so the all these aspects are involved in the copyright and uh, dr divakar 
So, there are these concepts of IPR and copyright. Uh, could you distinguish between these two terms? What is exactly mm. the IPR and uh, uh, how what is meant by cop copyright? No, under IPR, intellectual property rights, uh, many issues come under that. Copyright is one kind of intellectual property right. Uh, similar to copyrights, we also have patents, trademarks, geographic indications, etc. But today's uh, teleconference, we are mainly concerned with uh, copyright. So, as uh, Professor Chandrasekhar has said, copyright is mainly about controlling the commercial exploitation of the intellectual work. So, the word copyright if you take it has two components copy right. So, in a sense it is right to copy yeah. okay, right to copy right to commercially copy to put it more precisely. So, in that sense uh, if you are not copying it for commercial purposes perhaps you are not violating the copyright laws. So, since, uh, for example, in science and technology, we always believe that we stand on the shoulders of our predecessors. Okay. So, if you implement strictly the copyright regime, you know the society will not progress. So, we need to have some kind of a liberalization even in the copyright act. So, for that purpose, we have what we call fair use class in the copyright regime. So, in under fair use of copyright, what happens is, if somebody is using uh, a particular form in of, of this intellectual property for personal good or for the development of the society, perhaps he or she is not violating the copyright norms. For example, a user comes to a library and then as a librarian, you photocopy four or five pages and give it to the person. The person coming to you could be a faculty member and a faculty member uses that photocopy for teaching his students. So, in that sense, librarian is not violating any copyright act. Even the faculty member who came to the library and made a copy of the document, you know, for his private study or for distribution to his students has not violated anything. So, such kind of uh, acts come under fair use. So, under fair use, fair use in a way is a deterrent against infringement of copyright. So, infringement of copyright actually is when somebody makes money you know, by selling the, the works of somebody else. So, so infringement is more, more about the commercial exploitation of the, of the copyrighted content rather than academic use. So, since we are in an academic environment under in the university, so as far as academic environment is concerned, relate, we do not have to be really very, you know, uh, very much bogged down about the copyright laws. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so, as long as we are in, in the in, in the fair, uh, I mean we do not cross the fair limits, I think there is no problem about the copyright. Uh, so, as but however, Professor Chandrasekhar said that it is to protect the economic interests of the author, copyright has come into picture. Okay. So, we are not violating the copyright uh, laws, but still at the other side, you know in a society, in an open society, if inventions are to take place. You know, we believe that like the air, water, you know, uh, 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 literature and knowledge should also be freely available and it should be freely transferred from one person to another person. In the good olden days, you know, when there was no printing technology, when there was no recording medium, when there were no computers, the communication used to take this mouth to mouth. Okay. The teacher used to communicate to his students by mouth orally and uh, there was no recording, there were no books in, in those days there was no copyright problem in those days. So, as you have said, the copyright problem came up only when John Gutenberg has put together the printing machine and when he started printing the, the, the books and when there was a price attached to a publication and if somebody wants to illegally sell that uh, publication, then the question of copyright came up. But in an intellectual environment, especially in an academic environment, you know, uh, making copies for social good in my opinion, is not violation of copyright. It comes under fair use class. Yeah. Uh, then how to recognize, there is a question generally yes. our students may be more uh, confused whether the work is under copyright or not. Yes. So, if you open any book on the title page, if you see on the back of the title page generally, the C letter, small C letter is uh, encircled. 
So that shows uh, the copyright the copyright act. act. So then you can also see one thing: all rights reserved. There is sometimes the statement will be there. That means that work is already protected. In the case of phonograph, generally this uh, instead of C, generally they use a small P. So and there is a circle around it one. So that means that phonogram is already protected. That one copyrighted. That one. This is the indication uh, whether the, the that particular work is already copyrighted or not. Yeah, and uh, does this copyright is limited only to books or uh, other kinds of materials also? Yeah, like there are many. Works? No, no, because uh, there are four, three or four kinds are there. One is uh, literary works. Literary works means generally is a poem, is a drama. Or any verse, any verse. Then artistic works are there. So you you are performing certain works like that. So then uh, the maybe uh, dramatic works may be there. Then architectural works they are also protected. Then the cinematographic works are there. Paintings are there. Photographs are there. All these are there. So to whom uh, these works are the copyrights? Uh, to whom the copyright rests with these works? For example, if a literary works, the author is the author is the person to whom the uh, the copyright subsists on him. Then the music composer is there. His composer is the work the person who has the copyright for that musical works. So the producer of a cinematic program uh, film that is uh, he is the owner of that one. Like that, the the copyright works the ownership. Or the copyright rests with the those who produces it. For example, computer programs. So the those who has created that particular software, that 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 maybe is a programmer or a person who is involved in the creation of that one. That is the person with whom the copyright rests. So then, how much? What is term of copyright? That is another question. Maybe generally we generally we say. So generally for an author. So the 60 years after the death of the author, till that one, the copyright exists, rests with that particular author. I have a question. Sorry to interrupt you, okay. sir. Uh, if uh, a person is hired by some other uh, person to write a particular, uh, suppose Ambedkar University has hired uh, someone to write a lesson for the university, then uh, the copyright uh, will go to the creator or to the employer. Because uh, it goes to the uh, employer because he uh, that person is a uh, hired by the university, hired by the institution. So he has taken some royalty indirectly. So the generally the uh, copyright is with the uh, that uh, institution only. So for example, we engage some computer programmer to develop the software code. So the software code is created by those people programmers, but. They were paid by the university, so the naturally since they are getting that one, if independently they are doing that one, then the copyright is with them. Otherwise, if they are may paid, supplement what please, the please. professor Chandrasekhar has said. Uh, in most of the cases, the author or the creator is the owner of the copyright, but in many other circumstances, the author can. Transfer the copyright to yes. the publisher. You know, when if you look at the case of a book or a journal or even a cinema, for example, you know somebody gives the intellectual input, creates the intellectual content, and somebody makes it available publicly. So we call that agency person or the agency a publisher in case of a book or a journal. Many a time, in case of uh, uh, science and technology, for example. A lot of commercial publishers or the professional societies are involved in in the publication activity. So generally, what happens is the author transfers the copyright to the publisher. So at that time, the publisher will hold all the rights under the Copyright Act. So whatever provisions are there, ownership rights are there. The ownership actually gets transferred to the to the publisher rather than remaining with the with the author. In some cases, the author himself could be the publisher. So, in that, it's when he is the publisher as well as the author, he is the sole owner of that property. But otherwise, if you look at this in the society today, most of the cases, the copyright lies with the publisher or the service provider rather than the 
creator of the content. In the process what happens is the author sometimes may get some compensation. The publisher may give some kind of a monetary compensation to the, to the, to the author. Uh, so, he, his, uh, his ob obligation is fulfilled in that way. And also sometimes you know people do not write just for sake of money. You know, they say they are many, many, at least in science and technology, people write because I am the first to create. You know, you get a kind of a satisfaction that you have created that knowledge. So, so for that intellectual, to satisfy your intellectual curiosity or to satisfy that, you have created that intellectual work. You know, you write a piece of work. So, money may not really come into picture. So, money comes into picture only only in things like you know novels for example there is a lot of money involved in, in, in when somebody writes a novel or when somebody creates a painting for example so there, there is maybe a lot of money involved in that who wants the copyright of a, of, a, of a novel or a painting you know so 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 that is a totally different world you know doing something for monetary gain then copyright is is little more strict and then in certain other areas you know we don't do anything for for gain for example you have rightly mentioned the ambedkar open university suppose i write a lesson for ambedkar open university i don't write a lesson for 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 monetary gain you know for social good i, I write it but university takes care of protecting the copyright yes. because to to ensure that there is no infringement to ensure that you know and the, the, the content of the the lesson is not mutilated by somebody else so university takes care of that to to, to it maintains the integrity of the content that i have given to the university so so the responsibility of the copyright uh, holder. Uh, holder is also to to ensure the integrity that it you know it's not mutilated and it is given to the to the people whomsoever it is intended in this case to the students no, in the original form in which the creator has given. So, mm -hmm. it is not always the, the money that you know uh, the, uh, the, that we are is involved in the copyright. So, many a time for intellectual curiosity also you know we do lot of creative work and uh, we take credit in, in you know in taking the copyright. No, another thing uh, generally people uh, may be uh, interested to know uh, to whom this copyright does. So, again uh, if you see the back of the title page of any work, generally they write uh, after this C in this encircle, then they write the year uh, in which year it is registered, then the name of the institution or the author. If it is an author, generally they, they write the author's author or sometimes author's name is also written. Other way, generally, it rests with the publisher. Yeah, the if it is not written there. True, true, true. The property can, you know, also be transferred to a third party. For example, suppose I write a book and I am the owner of the copyright. I can transfer it to my children or grandchildren. You know, just as I transfer my house and after my death to my children, I can also transfer the the intellectual rights, the copyrights or the reproduction rights of an intellectual work. No, it could be a book, it could be a, a video, it could be an audio, it could be a, 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 you know, any kind of creative, it could be a painting. You know. So, just as we transfer the tangible properties to others, we can also assign the, you can also assign the rights to a third party. Yeah, uh, and uh, how you assign this, uh, that is another question often uh, uh, people are interested to know about that one. So, one is uh, for every country there is a, an office, yeah. copyright office, mm. the registrar of uh, copyright is there. In India, for example, in New Delhi, we have the register of copyrights and it is governed by a copyright board, which is uh, advised by a chairman and 14 members. So, another uh, aspect, uh, generally people are uh, interested to know whether it should compulsorily registered with the office or not. So, it need not be. If it is, if it is registered, it is okay. If it, even if it is not registered, if you say the statement, if you give the statement on the work on the back of the title, that is enough to protect your work against any infringement. But if you register it with the copyright office, it is always advantageous in the sense that in case there is a litigation, you know, if mm. you want to fight your case in a court of law, unless it is registered with the copyright office, you cannot tap the door of a court you know, to, to, gain, to gain back your rights. 
so so if 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 you if you think nobody will infringe your rights you don't have to perhaps register your work but if you think there is some commercial value to your work and somebody could infringe or somebody may exploit illegally your work then it's always better that you go to the copyright office and register your work it's just like will you know so you are free to write a will yeah. and keep it in an envelope and, and and give it to your children or you can also write a will and then register it so but it's always safe to register a will similarly a copyrighted work also there are some advantages in, in though it's not compulsory under the law so there is it's always advantageous to 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 go to the register of copyrights and then register it it doesn't cost you know a lot of money to register a work you know it's a simple procedure and then it's always safe and then good for the yeah, family in, to to, to register the copyright i came across one phrase poor man's copyright <laughs> Now, what is that exactly means that in the U.S. Uh, those others who could not register for this one, what they use it to say uh, do, they use it to uh, write about the the about the book or about the work, and they used to post it to their own address, self address. So when you get the registered post. you have the postal stamp on it one that is the basis for the year of registration and the copyright rests with that person that is called that was called a poor man's registration poor man's copyright registration what are the rights that are given to the authors under copyright yeah generally copyright as uh, dr divakar has already explained the uh, right on his own copy what is that right right means generally what if you want to uh sell it if you want to translate it if you want to uh make more copies or if you want to assign to somebody else so the the uh, any activity on the uh, on the work that is called the copyright so you can uh, you can sell that one for monetary purpose or you can sell for the particular uh, uh some uh, royalty or any any aspect or perform you, also perform, perform in also. the public for the or public produce yeah. or uh, you can make a, a song or any other thing uh, you can produce a, a particular document on that one all these activities are given right by the to the owner of the particular original work and what is the period yeah yes yeah. i told you for the literary works uh, the or the the other of the particular the owner of the particular original piece they are given uh, 60 years after the death of the particular author so e- it is uh, in case in some generally it, it depends on the country to country in the case of us it is about 95 years i think uh, my total period is 95 years so and in case of joint authors so how it is uh, it's like a joint mm-hmm. property suppose you know a house is owned by wife and husband so both own it similarly mm-hmm. if there is there are two others both of them will own it but that 70 years mm-hmm. comes into effect after the death of mm-hmm. all the others all suppose first the author dies early mm-hmm. then second author is still alive after the death of the second author then the period actually the clock actually starts It after starts that starts since it's a joint property so then i would like to supplement to this uh, apart from copyright we also have another concept, concept recent concept uh, what we may call copy left so copy left is a different form of uh, copyright uh, in <laughs> copyright is very very strict but copy left is very liberal in copy left what happens is suppose you create some content let us say i create a lesson for for my students okay and i register it under copy left so then another faculty member you know can take my lesson uh, can add value to that make some modifications and you know ma- can can improve upon that and correct in case i have made some mistakes he can correct the, those mistakes okay and then improve upon the language and then add on to that add something to that okay and then he he will ha- also have the rights to distribute it further so under copy left what happens is a person who is using the original copyrighted content can modify it make some kind of derivatives he can make a derivative it is reuse yeah Re- derivative mm. derivatives for reuse pro- and and he should also make it available free of cost copy left is always making content available 
non commercially without any commercial rights. So, uh, under I registered my work under copy left that is I am giving away my content for public good. So, you take my work and modify upon that enhance that add some value addition then you also give it uh, uh, make it available to the society free of cost. Most of the software license that you see now today for example, uh, come under that you know you, you is nobody wants that copyright that code is made available free of cost and people can work on that code improve, improve upon that upon and, pr uh, uh, and then they give it away for social good. So, that is how the, the, the technology develops. So, so, such things come under copy left kind of a licensing. I so think uh, there are four levels of freedom uh, for modification in this one. So, in the copy left. So, freedom zero is just to use it. So, that is the freedom level zero. So, then freedom level one is uh, your study for the only for the it can it could be used only for the study. So, freedom level two is uh, you can uh, share it you can use it and share it among others. And freedom number uh, three is where you can not only modify and redistribute. These are the four levels of freedom attributed to the copy left. Yeah. And the symbol generally used how to recognize which is uh, copy left. Then in the case of copyright, then you have the C with the circle, general ordinary C. In the case of copy left, the C is uh, reversed. Mirror image. Mirror image of this one. So, how to use, the, how to create this uh, mirror image of the C. So, that is also another, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the computer programs have been developed, freely available on that one. You can download and uh, this, this uh, mm. C will be appearing on your works in the, the as a uh, mirror image. No, so we have a non-profit organization called Creative, Creative Commons. Commons. Oh, yeah. Creative <laughs> Commons. So, Creative Commons monitors all these kinds of licenses and then that is an international body Creative Commons. So, they have a range of licenses. So, you have said 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Depending on the situation, one can choose an appropriate license which is very apt for that particular piece of creativity. So, Creative Commons is a non-profit organization again. In Creative Commons licenses, what happens is some rights are reserved, not all rights, yeah. some rights are reserved and what, what are those few rights is only to maintain the integrity of that content. Yeah, in the case of copyright is uh, all rights reserved. So, uh, this is uh, uh, the changing the that in that statement that is only some rights are reserved, some rights are reserved. That is the basic uh, theme of the copy left. And so this copy left and creative commons, I think they have come into existence with the open access movement true, initiative. True. Can you? That too in the digital environment. In the yeah. digital yeah. environment. Yeah. So, all these concepts came up mostly in the after the last 15 years say after the internet became very popular after people started creating content you know in a digital form digital thanks forms. to the IT revolution. So, all this is you know uh, happening because it is easy to create content using the information technology easy to put it on the internet easy to distribute it. So, so when you have um, you know, wh whereas you know in case of print world it is not that easy to, to make 100 copies of a book and then sell it in, in, in the market whereas on the internet it is much easier to distribute the content. So, creative commons, copy left, all these things you know came up uh, to protect content or, or disseminate content uh, in a proper way in the digital environment. So, these are all the implications of the copyright issues in the digital environment. Yeah, uh, that is uh, actually the digital environment we have several like, gadgets very handy to us. So, for example, if you have the printer you can make a number of copies. So, even Xerox means photocopier, you can use scanner. it. You, a scanner is another medium as a scanner. If you scan this one and you can, uh, there is a ma multifunctional units are there. So, which could be built in a scanner may be there, a photocopier may be there, a printer may be there, all these say. or even fax machine is also included in this one. So, that what happens, so if you have the piece of information, you can easily copy that one, you can scan and put, uh, save that copy file into your computer and you make, you can make a number of copies of that one, not only making printing and distributing that one, you can also communicate uh, to any part of the world. 
So, this uh, became a threat to the Copyright Act. So, this uh, digital environment that is why. So, people on the one side they are uh, uh, they are supporting the copyright and on the other hand some people, some organizations some people they 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 are anti uh, anti copyright movement has uh, already started for example creative commons uh, which was uh, the idea of uh, Warren Lassig so who started the movement uh, for the free uh, exchange of ideas so whatever the intellectual uh, capacity of the man that should be shared by everyone equally shared by. So, if you want to progress if the humanity has to progress the ideas generated in the human minds they should be they should be shared by each one and uh, everyone everyone should share this one. This is the concept uh, behind this moment. And even the open uh, archives initiative it uh, um, promotes the interoperability. Uh, so to in order to promote uh, open access and increase the use of information by the public. So, no, in open access movement started for a different reason mm -hmm. because you know uh, using the copyright laws uh, there has been lot of exploitation by some of the commercial publishers world over especially in science and technology. So, at least in science and technology what happens is scientists do research they create content you know create content for the journals and a third party a journal publisher you know makes huge amount of money you know by charging huge subscriptions. So, in the way uh, what is happening is the, the scientists themselves are unable to afford to buy this content once again. So, because of that you know to come out of this problem the open access movement has actually started. Open access movement actually started in the developed world not really in the developing world. So, that is another uh, you know uh, area to discuss. Uh, but, but uh, in the digital environment coming back to the digital environment and rights in the digital environment and, and, and things are little tricky in the digital environment when compared to the uh, rights library. in the traditional print environment. Print environment. Because in a print environment what happens is uh, you can make a photocopy of a book or photocopy of an article. When you photocopy what happens is it is a copy it is not original photocopy is always a photocopy it cannot be uh, it cannot near near it cannot be near to your original you know suppose i give photocopy to you okay you read that photocopy okay if you want to make one more copy you make one more photocopy of that so that becomes a second copy then again the resolution will come down so there are physical limitations on how many photocopies a, a person can make so so that so so the technology itself will restrict in the print world Whereas, in the, in the digital environment the situation is totally different. Suppose, I download an article from the internet from an electronic journal in a PDF format. Okay. Once it comes to my system, I can distribute it to any number of people and the PDF that I have downloaded in a digital environment from an electronic book or from an electronic journal is not a copy, it is in fact an original. Original. Because in the digital Replica. environment, there is no difference between what is original and what is a copy. So, that difference exists only in the print environment. We have a print book, we have a photocopy book. Whereas, in the digital environment, everything is original. So, when I download something from a service provider, what I have taken is an original content. And then, uh, when I give it to my colleague, I am giving away the original content. And uh, thanks to the technology, by pressing a few buttons, you know, one can redistribute the, the, the original digital document to hundreds or thousands of users. So, here you know the, the question of digital rights management has arisen. Yes. It is a new form of uh, copyright in the digital environment. We call it digital rights management. You try to protect the rights of the creator. At the same time, you also need to protect the rights of your user. So, we need to strike a, a judicious balance between what is the right of the owner of the copyright and what is the right of a reader. Reader also has a right, student has a right in the university environment, student has a right to download an article, student has a right to take a portion of that article, maybe put it in his PhD thesis. So, we need to protect the rights of the students also. Similarly, at the same time, we also need to ensure that the, the, the original copyright holder or the author or the publisher, he 
his rights also maintained to some extent. So, this is all we call under a, that is all a new world called DRM digital rights management. Here we in digital rights man we are restricting the access by mm. of the users. Yeah, 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 there are several methods to restrict the access as well. For example, even the 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 copy is there whether the it is the copyrighted article or if it is is a copy beyond the copyright and is uh, excluded from the copyright. For example, you have the watermark on that one. So, when you print that one, if any copyrighted file is uh, downloaded from the internet or any database, generally you get, if you can see the watermark of that particular institution or the others on there. So, so that along with the printing, when you print that one or you copy that one, you can see that one who is the original copyright owner. So, another way of uh, protecting, well encryption so is another method. So, for example, uh, suppose I want to give the exclusive right to the only the users for uh, using that particular one. Then uh, what I do generally the, the producer owner of the particular uh, file or the producer of the database etc. They, they encrypt the matter. So, unless I uh, the user has the key to decrypt that one then uh, you cannot be able to access that, that means one. only the authorized users uh, will yeah, be able to right use the madam. that is that is a uh, that is the a idea behind that one so that um, uh, they, the only the authorized users can use that particular uh, file or the particular document or the file so, so what are the implications of this to digital libraries, digital library environment. Yeah, it has a lot of implications, and, and, uh, professional implications, uh, because previously uh, we used to do interlibrary activity very liberally. Okay, so suppose uh, a, a, a scientist in another institution requires a particular piece of work he or the librarian or the scientist telephones me or sends an email to me. I used to photocopy and send it by post. So, when you send a photocopy under interlibrary loan, you are not violating any copyright law because you are sending only a photocopy. But in the digital environment, what happens is when you download a PDF and share the PDF with another institution, there are uh, the digital right man rights management issues are involved. It depends on, it varies from situation to situation. If you have signed an agreement with the service provider that the, the, the only your users have rights for using that, you are not supposed to share it with users of another organization. So, these are some of the implications in the, uh, in the Sorry DRM. to interrupt, I would like to add something. Yeah. I read it somewhere uh, in the articles that uh, uh, experiments are go going on. I think already some software has evolved for uh, giving uh, lo uh, for sending the digital information also on loan to other libraries and after expiry of a particular term that automatically it disappears. Yeah. So, that, that in those books it things happens. In, yeah. you know, in, in, in case of e-books and e -books uh, it is e yeah. that is you, you loan an e-book to a customer hmm. to a pattern in your library. So, previously what we used to do is we loan a book for two weeks. Okay, then after two weeks, he needs to bring it, bring the book back to the library, get it renewed or return it. But now, in a digital environment, what happens is you issue a digital book to the to a, to, to a to a to a Kindle or some handheld device of a user. User comes to you with a device, with a reading device, and library server has the digital book, in, you know, in, in the on the server. You transfer that digital content to the user's device. So then, what happens is, just as you issue the book for 15 days, for 15 days or whatever is the period, so person can read it for that period. After that date, it disappears from it his disappears. device. He will not be able to physically; it will be there, but he will not be able to use that. So people are using that kind it's of technologies, it's like an DRM. a kind of digital rights yeah, management. Yeah. To, 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 to protect that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a short while ago you were discussing about the fair use. So, there are some more aspects in the fair use class. How much amount of content can be used under the class fair use? That is one aspect. That is important. Actually. So, generally there are some prescriptions are there. One is that one. Uh, about uh, th up to 300 hours. For what purpose you are using that one? using that one. These two aspects say again uh, we have to take into consideration. What is the purpose for which you are using that one? Suppose if you are writing for a commentary, you are writing for a 
parody on the particular. So, you want to use it for a, a some announcement or if you are using for a classroom teaching, suppose you a poem is there, you want to explain to the students. So, you can use up to 300 words. Suppose, if the entire work is 300 words, how to do? Then it uh, becomes plagiarism. Yeah, <laughs> that's, why yes, that's why there is, a, there is also some uh, measures are there. Mm. One tenth of the partic particular work cannot be, more than that more one than. cannot be used that one. So, that if it is below that one as uh, content, then you can use it and the, the copyright prob infringement uh, uh, clauses may not work on those ones. So, these are the things some of the, if you are writing for, an, uh, for a comment in a review, uh, reviewing a book or reviewing an article or in the case of uh, teaching purpose, you can use it, use it as one. Uh, what are the common uh, copyright infringements that we found, we find? Mm. No, copyright infringement is somebody illegally selling works, okay. Uh, for it, it may happen with books. It may also happen with uh, the entertainment industry, for example. A lot of uh, you know infringement takes place in the entertainment industry. We see a lot of cases ha you know, being reported in the in there. Mm -hmm. And similarly, even in the books world, there are a lot of pirated versions pirated of the book versions. available. We have an original version. We also have a pirated, pirated version. So one has to be cautious so with with these pirated ed editions. So and then the other side of it is uh, the 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 plagiarism. Yes. So, plagiarism is slightly different from copyright. 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 <coughs> so, in plagiarism, what happens is we don't. In copyright, actually, we 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 make a copy for some gain, for some commercial gain. Whereas, in case of plagiarism, what happens is plagiarism is a kind of theft. It's a kind mm -hmm. of a theft or a kind of academic dishonesty, if we can put it. Some people consider mm -hmm. it as a, as as a, as a, as, a, as, an, as, a, as a fraud or academic dishonesty, copying somebody's content and attributing it as your own. Professor Chandrasekhar has said few while ago that you can copy a few words, some words you can copy and put it in your work, that does, that comes under fair use. Okay. Suppose I take his article, remove his name and then put my name as an author and then send it to another journal. So, that constitutes immoral work, it con constitutes fraud and it is, it is it is academic dishonesty. So, such kind of things you know, though it is related to copyright, you know it comes under uh, another concept called plagiarism. So, plagiarism is you take somebody else's content and then s claim that it is yours. It so is uh, equal to theft then. Yes, intellectual theft. In intellectual, a way it is an intellectual theft. theft. So, these two are actually related concepts, Stealing plagiarism ideas. and copyright, they go hand in hand. In plagiarism, one may not be getting too much of commercial benefit, but you may like to get get the intellectual satisfaction that I have created it, you know, which is not exactly correct. So, so that is why we have a lot of software packages available today in the market, you know, which will check the plagiarism. Some are available free of cost, there are some which are commercial also. So, it is turn it on one one on and yeah. plagiarism check yeah, yeah, Now, many universities have uh, installed the anti-plagiarism software packages and uh, the students are encouraged to check their manuscript, you know, through by putting it into these one of these uh, software packages and see whether there is any plagiarism. Sometimes, you know, plagiarism may take place unknowingly. You may not be knowing that you have taken somebody else's paragraph. Mm -hmm. You know, you may because uh, uh, by mistake, you, you know, uh, you might have written the, the same way. But the software will will check up and tell you whether you have uh, whether it is matching with somebody else's content. So, these software packages are extremely good, the anti-plagiarism <coughs> software packages are extremely important in the current uh, digital world. So, that is another uh, way of protecting the digital rights. You these anti-plagiarism softwares, uh, do they detect uh, the uh, ideas also or only it is limited to the words? No, no. ideas <laughs> actually come under, do not come under copyright, uh, ideas actually come under patents. Suppose you, you have an idea, you invent something, the idea per se is not protected by copyright. It is protected by it is protected by it is protected by patents. Mm. So uh, copyright is only a fixed expression of a particular one. Suppose you take a pen for example, you write an essay on a pen, 
Okay. So, writing an essay on pen and a fountain pen is protected under copyright. But suppose there is an ink in the pen, ink may be protected. How the ink is manufactured, how the ink flows, that is all protected by the patent. Mm -hmm. Somebody might have taken, invented how to how to how to create ink for a ballpoint pen. It's so that a design comes aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is idea. Idea of creating a semi-solid you know free flowing ink for a ball point pen. So, that is also intellectual property, but that does not come under copyright that comes under patenting. Patents, so, yeah. you go to a patent office and register it. So, these both are uh, intellectual properties, but th that so that is a totally different world. Patenting is a totally different world when compared to copyright. Yeah, for curbing this uh, plagiarism in, in universities, the INSIDOC, uh, they are uh, supporting the universities to establish a computer lab for uh, the, for the uh, uh, subscribing to the anti-plagiarism software and checking and that one. So, they can, universities can have a MOU with INSIDOC. No, so that is UGC. UGC has Inflipnet. Inflipnet. Inflipnet has recently. Yeah, Inflipnet. Inflipnet. Inflipnet has recently started Shodh Ganga, a yeah. repository of Indian PhD thesis. thesis. Yeah. So before one can, one a university PhD scholar can uh, upload mm -hmm. his PhD thesis into the uh, Shodh Ganga. But before you upload your Shodh Ganga, your thesis, the it will go through the anti-plagiarism anti software. Yeah, yeah. They will check. So, what extent of uh, plagiarism has yeah. taken place? If it is less than 30 percent, if I remember correctly, it should be less than 30 percent. If it is less than 30 percent, then the thesis is admitted into the repository and it becomes available free of cost to the entire world. Uh, another aspect uh, we forgot to discuss, I think uh, the international agreements and conventions uh, in the copyright uh, area. So, in the Bernay Convention, then Universal Copyright Convention, then WIPO, World Intellectual uh, Property Organization. I think uh, these are the major uh, agreements among the different countries. For example, uh, work is created in one country. So, another country, if it is not protected, so some other people from some other country may also uh, copy it and they can violate that one. In such cases, what to do? No, no, is, there a, is there an international uh, law for copyright? No, there is nothing like an international mm -hmm. copyright yeah. law. So, all copyright laws are country yeah. specific. Yeah. If you want to protect your work in India, you need to go to the copyright office in New Delhi and register it there. Then only one will have, a person will have rights in India. Similarly, you know, I think you must have heard recently there was a case, you know, in, in, in the media uh, about one of the universities, central universities in India. Uh, I remember it is Delhi University perhaps yes. that uh, there was a there, there was a, there was a, a suit lawsuit filed by a university press. I think it is Oxford University Oxford Press. University. Oxford yeah. University Press yeah, has yeah. filed a suit on copyright in infringement against a, a, a photocopying mm -hmm. shop located in the Delhi University campus. campus. So this happened because in the Delhi University campus, what was happening was. And the students were borrowing books from the library, giving, taking it to a photocopying shop on the campus and then paying 30 paisa or 40 paisa per page and photocopying the entire book and then using it for their study purposes. So, the publisher, the, the Oxford University Press went to the court uh, saying that there is an infringement of copyright in the university campus. Then it was a, it was a very interesting litigation that took place, dragged on for several months, and then the the the, the student side uh, advocates, you know, they argued that the the original books are uh, very expensive, you know, five thousand rupees, ten thousand rupees. The students come from very poor families and lower strata of the society. They have no way to pay five thousand rupees and buy buy the original edition of the book. So they are paying thirty paisa per page and then photocopying the book. And they are not, you know, commercially exploiting that. They, what they are doing is they are only reading it for their examination purposes, and then uh, for their personal private study they are using it. So they argued that they are not violating any copyright law because it's only for personal study, private study, because they could not afford to buy the the original 
content in the original form. So it was a very interesting case so, so involving the, the university and the publisher, but ultimately it was settled, like the case was settled very amicably, <laughs> then it was a win-win situation for the students as well as the publisher. So they agreed to pay a small amount as a royalty for each photocopy made. So the case was settled in that way. And there is also the other case uh, of our uh, internationally uh, acclaimed uh, Nobel laureate uh, Rabindranath Tagore, yes. uh, who uh, has given rights on his uh, all his literary works to the Shantiniketan, who uh, which he has founded in West Bengal. So I think in 2001 uh, that license has expired, copyright license, and uh, then all his uh, uh, then the Indian government has refused to continue the copyright. Then uh, this was uh, mainly welcomed by the writer, uh, the writers and literary persons, uh, because uh, all his works will now become more uh, uh, reachable to the public and also more uh, popularize his works. But some of the singers of his songs, they felt that the qual quality maybe uh, may suffer uh, due to this uh, lifting of the copyright and also the huge loss is suffered by the Shantini Ketan because uh, they, they lose the economic uh, the revenue the, that uh, they get through these uh, uh, through the works of uh, Rabindranath Tagore. These are the two main important cases which we come across uh, in India about the yeah, copyright. Yeah. So, mainly the Indian copyright is protected by the Indian copyright laws which were enacted in 1957. So, even before uh, n uh, independence, the copyright laws were there in the British uh, government uh, era. That was in 1911, I think, uh, that is a law uh, that was existing in the, British uh, role. in the British role. So, if you see the uh, Indian copyright law of 1957, so there are several uh, sections are there which describes uh, in the first section, so what is meant by a who is the owner? What is the copyright? Who are the? What are the works? Comes under the subsist under the Indian copyright law. For example, the literary works, artistic works, uh, etc. Then, who is the owner? Who could be called as the owner? Uh, actually, copyright holder. Uh, that one. Then, uh, what is meant by infringement of the copyright law? So, what are the? Um, uh, what are the? Uh, punishment, punishment, punishment for, for violating the, violating the uh, copyright. copyright law that is infringing the copyright law and also uh, how to make use of the fair, fair use. So, fair dealing or fair use, this are the one. In case of uh, the a person violates in a, a, a company or organization, violates the Indian copyright law, so how to proceed, what are the remedies? So, they are also given there. So, generally such cases as they are involved in the civil laws, I think I am correct. So, not come under the uh, criminal laws, they are entertained under the uh, civil courts, district court generally you can file a case into the district court and uh, you can complain and uh, the ultimately the hearings uh, will uh, come and the it will be uh, judged by this one. So, if in the case of fair use, so there is also one symbol is given by the by the international organizations, F is used for the fair and F is connected with the U downwards. So, F U and it is F and U, so it is uh, encircled in a circle. So, that is a symbol generally we use for the fair use. So, these are the some of the aspects uh, uh, we have dealt in this uh, uh, video uh, uh, teleconference program. Thank you, Professor uh, Chand Shekhar Rao Garu. Uh, so far, we have discussed the concept uh, and importance of plagiarism, and also briefly we have touched on the history, how this uh, uh, the Berlin Convention and then the Geneva uh, conve convention and uh, the uh, uh, con uh, copyright. Uh, 
uh, this thing and in which uh, India is a member and also we have seen the important provisions uh, of the Copyright Act, Indian Copyright Act uh, and the amendments also which were made uh, to incorporate the digital information. We have discussed the challenges uh, of copyright issues in the digital environment and also we have discussed briefly about the digital rights management issues and also the implications uh, of the uh, uh, copyright provisions uh, to the digital uh, library environment and we have also touched on the open access so uh, and plagiarism. Thank you very much sir for coming mm -hmm. to the studios and uh, uh, explaining the concepts to our students. Thank you so much.